Okay, starting this section of our study on circles, we're going to be looking a little bit more in depth at tangents and secants. In this particular set of notes, we're looking specifically at tangents, and then we'll work on from there. All right, so we start off today with three theorems related to tangents. The first, if a line is tangent to a circle, and remember we've said a tangent is a line that intersects the circle in one point. So if a line is tangent to a circle, then it is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. So here we have our radius that is perpendicular to this tangent line. In the second theorem, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to a radius at its end point on the circle, then the line is tangent to the circle. So here again, we're saying that if the line and the radius are perpendicular, then the line must be a tangent. And you might say, well, those sound like they're saying the same thing. Ultimately, they're saying the converse of one another. So in this case, we're saying if line M is tangent to circle P, if line M is tangent to circle P, then M is perpendicular to the radius segment QP. And remember that upside down capital T, that's our symbol for perpendicular. In the other theorem, if a line is perpendicular to a radius, so if line M is perpendicular to the radius QP, then the line is tangent to the circle. So then line M is tangent to circle P. So we should identify that these are converses of one another, but ultimately one thing is going to be given. Either these two are perpendicular, you make the conclusion that the line must be a tangent line, or given that the line is tangent, then somehow use the fact that these must make a right angle. They must be perpendicular. All right, and our final theorem for today, if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to a circle, then they are congruent. So in this case, we understand that in our diagram, point T is outside the circle, it's exterior. Then we have two segments that are tangent to the circle. So if we were to extend these lines, they would only intersect the circle at point V or at point W. And what this is saying, if these segments are both tangents, so if segment TV and segment TW are tangent to circle R. So that has to be met first. If that is true, then we can conclude that segment TV must be congruent to segment TW. If they are both tangents from the same exterior point, then those two segments are congruent to one another. Okay, so we have a couple of examples then to work through related to the theorems that we've just spoken about. The first of which is down here at the bottom of the page. So in example one, given that the length of segment AB is eight units, so we'll go ahead and label that there. The length of segment AC is 15 units, so from A to C is 15 units. And the length of segment BC is 19 units. Now keep in mind that's going all the way out here. 19 units, determine if segment AB is tangent to the circle. Now, if it's to be tangent to the circle, we know that where the tangent side here, and I can clearly see that BC is not a tangent, so I'm not worried about that one. But in this case, if this is to be a tangent, then it should be perpendicular to this radius or to this diameter. Since those are parts of the same line, in either form, the radius or the diameter must be perpendicular to the tangent. Now, if we think about how we determine if that perpendicularness is actually there, how do we determine if that's a right angle? Well, if it's a right angle, then this triangle should be a right triangle, which means the Pythagorean theorem should be true. So the question becomes, 
does 8 squared plus 15 squared equal 19 squared? If it does, if that's a true statement, then I can conclude that yes, that is a right angle. If it's not true, then I know that is not a right angle because the Pythagorean theorem is not true. So let's look at the left side, 8 squared plus 15 squared. We get a value of 289. On the right side, we get 19 squared, which is 361. Now it is clearly evident that those are not equal to each other. Since they are not equal, that means this cannot be a right angle, which means it is not tangent. No right angle present, not a tangent line. All right, now let's move to the back of the page and talk about a couple of more examples related to tangents. Number two, find the missing link. Assume segments that appear to be tangent to the circle are tangent to it. Okay, so in this case, let's see, what do I see? I see something that resembles a right triangle. I know this side is X, this side is 12, and it says if they appear to be tangent, then they are tangent, which means if those are tangent, that's a right angle. Now the question becomes, how long is this hypotenuse, that longest side in that right triangle? Well, I can see that here it's labeled this part is 8. And there's something we know about this length here. I would identify this as a radius. It goes from the center to a point on the circle. And looking at this radius here that's 12 units long, that means this radius must also be 12 units long. So the entire side here, 8 plus 12, must be 20 units long. Okay, so now in terms of the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 12 squared. And remember in your Pythagorean theorem, these two are the parts that intersect at the right angle. Equals the hypotenuse 20 squared. Okay, so square those values first. 12 squared is 144, 20 squared is 400. Then we need to subtract 144 from both sides to get x squared equals 256. All right, now from what we've studied previously, we know that to get rid of that squared means we're going to take the square root on both sides so that those cancel out over here, leaving x. And the question becomes, is the square root of is the square root of, there we go, 256 whole number. If it is, which it is in this case, I'm going to write it as such. If it's not, you'll want to read the directions carefully to determine whether it wants a simplified square root answer or whether it wants you to um, give it a decimal version rounded to some number of positions. So in this case, find the missing length x. x is 16. All right. And the last one, find the perimeter of the triangle, assume segments that appear to be tangent to the circle are tangent to it. So from our final theorem on the front side, if two segments from the same exterior point are both tangent to a circle, then they have to be congruent. Which means in this case, this segment from the exterior point to that tangent point is 4.2 units long. From the same exterior point to the point of tangency here would also be 4.2 units long. Likewise, I have some other congruent segments that I can mark. I know that these two segments from this exterior point to the point of tangency have to be congruent to each other. And lastly, the two segments from this exterior point to their point of tangency must be congruent to each other. So how does that help me find the perimeter of the triangle? That's where these longer lengths come into play. If I know that this entire side is 11 units long and this portion is 4.2 units long, then I can determine through simple subtraction how long this portion must be. So 11 minus 4.2 gives us a length of 6.8 units. Since these two segments are congruent, this segment would also have a length of 6.8 units. Now we use the length of this entire side here. 14.8 is the entire length. This portion is 6.8, so 14.8 
minus 6.8 tells me that this is 8 units long, which means this is also 8 units long. So what does that give us? It tells us that this side of the triangle can now be determined. 8 plus 4.2, 12.2 for that side length. And now we have enough information to find the perimeter of the triangle. So 11 plus 14.8 plus 12.2 gives us a value of 38 units. And that takes care of this set of notes on testing for tangency.